What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Ask RGT85 where I answer your questions. This week's question comes to us from John Canham. John has a channel. It's a pretty cool channel. I highly suggest you guys check it out. I'll put a link in the description box below. But John asked me a question. He asked, what got me into retro gaming? And that's kind of an interesting question because I guess everyone has a different story when it comes to retro gaming. Obviously, you know, I'm 31, so I grew up with a lot of these games. You know, I got an NES when I was four as a hand-me-down. And uh, I had an NES, Genesis, N64, Saturn, PS1, PS2. And that's sort of the spectrum of retro consoles I had. And then on the handheld side, I had a Game Boy, uh, Game Boy Color, uh, Advance, and a Game Gear. So, you know, I grew up playing a lot of different stuff. I grew up playing a lot of different systems. And I didn't really get into hardcore collecting. Uh, I did some collecting when I was about 20. I had my own apartment and you know I just started buying games because I didn't have you know many bills. My parents were helping me out because I was going to college with the apartment, but I sold a lot of stuff. I had I'd switched jobs and I was in the middle of jobs, so I sold a lot of games to sort of stay afloat. And then I also moved out of my apartment into a house with some friends, so I had a downside. So I would say as far as retro collecting goes probably when i was 25 26 is when i got really hardcore into it so about five years ago and since then um i've just been collecting a lot of retro stuff and playing a lot of retro stuff and i guess the reason would be well i mean there's a multitude of reasons um but you know more of the obvious ones are a lot of these systems you know that i've been picking up and playing um i didn't have as a kid either because i had something else or my parents couldn't afford it I didn't have a Super Nintendo, I, I chose a Genesis instead, so I really didn't play Super Nintendo games until I was like 18 or 19 as far as like hardcore owning them myself. You know, I'd play them at a friend's house, but I never played Super Metroid as a kid. I never played The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. I played all those as, a, as an adult. Things like the Jaguar, the 3DO, I wanted those systems as a kid, but my parents couldn't afford it. So now I'm able, as an adult with, you know, an income, I'm able to check out these systems that I missed out on when I was a kid and it's, it's fascinating to me just to see you know these different systems that I never got a chance to try out and to own them now as an adult it's kind of a special experience because it's like playing you're literally playing them for the first time and I would say I collect more retro now than anything else primarily because modern gaming just kind of sucks in my opinion I you know I have a PS4 I have a Wii U um, I play a lot of Wii U related stuff and 3DS related stuff because of my job with the Nintendo enthusiast, but as far as when I want to unwind or relax or just, just play games, I usually play retro stuff and that's because I guess modern gaming just isn't that interesting. Like, look at something like the Super Nintendo, look at that library, look at the Genesis library, the PS1, the PS2 library, look at how diverse that is. And then compare it to the PS4, it's like night and day, there's not a lot of diversity, there's not a lot of originality in modern gaming. Um, on the indie spectrum, you know, you do get a bit. But as far as, you know, just AAA releases, they're not really there as far as, you know, what's interesting, what's different. You're getting a lot of remasters, if anything. So I guess modern gaming just is a little bit boring. I wish, you know, development costs weren't so high so that developers could take a chance and, you know, reach out and try different styles of games. But just with retro games, like, there's so many, there's so many games I have not played in the retro market. And it's always fun to discover them because they were made at a time where when you shipped the game, that was it. That was it. That was the game you shipped. That you didn't have patches. You didn't have downloadable updates. And while those are good in modern gaming, um, because you know a lot of developers, let's face it, they rush these games. It also allows developers to sort of release an unfinished product and add content at a later date. Whereas back then, if your game sucked on launch date, your game sucked. Period. So. You know, the classic games, they didn't, you don't have to worry about patches with those because they're classic games. They, they work the way they're intended to. And it's just, an, it's, just an interesting, it's just an interesting realm of how game development has really changed and whatnot. So I, you know, going forward in the future, I probably still will collect retro over modern. Like my modern, you know, my PS4 collection is pretty modest. My Wii U collection is pretty good, but Nintendo kind of does their own thing anyways. But as far as, you know, the PS4, Xbox One, I just think they're not very good systems, so I focus more on the retro stuff. I'd rather play Dino Crisis on the Dreamcast than, you know, some half-assed PS4 release or, you know, a remaster or something. So, you know, I guess I guess that's pretty much it. That's how I got into retro, and that's kind of why I stay in retro. 
Um, I do dabble in the modern, of course, but you know, RGT85 stands for Retro Gaming Tube 85, so you know, that's a main focus here. So I wanna thank John for that question. As always, if you like my Facebook page, um, I post once a week and ask you guys to uh, ask me a question. So make sure you hit that up, like that page, ask me a question. Thank you for watching this video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you got into modern uh, retro gaming about. And as always, thank you for subscribing. I'll check you guys next time. Later.